Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you about my most favorite and go-to eyeshadow brushes. This video has been requested by a lot of you guys. I especially wanted to do this for those of you who are relatively new to makeup and are still learning. I'm still learning myself along the way and quite frankly, um, there's so much information out there. There's so much, uh, so many eyeshadow brushes available in the market that it can get really overwhelming. We all start somewhere and I know for those of you who are like looking for those eyeshade brushes that are just like the basic, basic eyeshade brushes and the ones that you need for like that perfect blending of your eyeshade, um, do watch this video because I will be telling you what to buy and I will be telling you step by step uh, about the eyeshade brushes that I use for my eye makeup. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also click that bell button, button that's next to the subscribe button because that's how you'll know if when I upload a new video, which I do every week. But uh, it's good to do that so that you get the notification. So I want to start with the very first brush that I use for my eyeshadow application. Uh, if you've seen any of my makeup tutorials before this, you'll know that I start with my transition eyeshade first. That's why you will see me starting my eye makeup using this brush. This is the Morphe E27 brush and this is like a perfect brush for the transition shade application. So the transition shade is the first shade that I apply when I'm starting my eye makeup and that's because it gives you a very nice gradient effect. It sets this area up for like the further eyeshade application and I usually go in or the crease and around the crease area to give like a soft, subtle, light or a dark eyeshade look. This is how the brush looks. You can see that the bristles are quite fanned out at the top and uh, they start off as being very dense and thick at the bottom but as they go up they get a little fluffy and white. The reason I really like this is because it doesn't give me a precise application of eyeshade and it actually just sort of goes over the whole area and gives it a soft subtle look. There's no edges to the eyeshade when I apply it with this. It also does not pick a lot of pigment and that's a good thing when you're applying transition shade because you don't want to go in with like a block of color on your eye right away. You want to apply a very soft subtle eye shade and then build up the color afterwards. So because of the softness of this brush and also the fanned out uh, bristles at the top, this is like the perfect brush for that transition shade application. I also have this brush which is the Morphe M441 brush. Um, this is also fanned out but not as much as my E27 and you can see the bristles are a little tapered here towards the top. Uh, I don't know, I always still end up using the E27. Uh, now if you're looking towards another brand for the transition shade brush, I believe Sigma has the E40 which is quite similar to this. I haven't used it personally. I mean in any other brand just look for something that's soft and like white at the top. Next I'm going to tell you about my most favorite blending brush. Now I have owned this brush for around seven years now and it's still in perfect condition. The bristles are still in shape and it's still perfectly soft and it does an amazing job. This I purchased from Sephora and this is the Crease Shadow Brush number 73. This is how it looks. The quality of this brush is just amazing because it's just so soft and you can see that the shape of the bristles is still so good. This is my first eyeshade brush that I actually spent some money on. I don't remember the exact price for this but this is one of those uh, brushes that you could say um, like the first one that I owned. Uh, I've owned other eyeshade brushes before this but they were like really really cheap quality eyeshade brushes. That was a time when I was applying makeup but I wasn't really going in for like a detailed makeup look and yeah once I started 
taking interest in eye makeup this is the first eyeshade brush that I purchased I don't know if they still carry the, this exact same brush but you can get any crease shadow brush from either Sephora or any other makeup store really so as the name says is the crease shadow brush you can use this for blending the eyeshade in and around the crease and also in the corner of the eye I have another option here which is the Morphe M505 brush um, this is also a very nice blending brush you can see how the bristles look it's not as soft as the Sephora blending brush but it does a good job now if I compare these two you can tell that Sephora brush is more dense than this Morphe brush and it's not as wide as the Morphe brush but it still does a good job but somehow I always end up reaching for the Sephora brush and yeah that's why it's my favorite brush now if you don't have these brands accessible or you're just looking for other options I believe that Sigma has the E38 which is the diffuse crease brush also Mac has the 224 number brush which is also for the same purpose I haven't used the Sigma or MAC myself like those specific brushes but the reviews were good and if these are these two options are not available to you you can look at these two other brushes as well now my next absolute must-have eyeshade brush is this Morphe M507 brush which is also a blending brush it is relatively thin this is how it looks it's tapered and it's very thin and it's not like a pencil brush it's uh, dense but it's very soft and it's a little longer than a pencil brush would be the reason I love this brush is when I need to put that eyeshade right inside my crease and blend it in or in the corner of the eye but really in the corner and not around the corner area this is like the perfect brush it gives me a very precise application of eyeshade but at the same time it does an amazingly well uh, blended eyeshade application like I can blend my heart out using this so I absolutely love this I don't know if you've seen any other makeup tutorials but if you see my previous few you'll see me using this in almost each one of them and this is something I recommend highly if you're really new to eyeshade brushes and want to get that one holy grail brush that you will use each time for your makeup now the MAC 221 is very similar to this one it's also a thin blending brush I've seen it online I've seen the reviews which are pretty good now the fourth eyeshadow brush that I would recommend to you would be a flatter blending brush up till now the ones I've shown you are more round and they're perfect for blending but if you want a brush that packs on more shade and also blends at the same time I would suggest you get the MAC 217 number brush this is a flatter brush than the other ones but at the same time it's very dense this is how it looks up close this is ideal for packing on color on your eyelid at the same time blending that shade as well it's very soft to the touch and it gives you a perfect application of the eye shade on the eyelid and you can blend that shade from the eyelids towards your crease really well with this this is a very popular brush by MAC and if you go into a MAC store and ask for a good blending brush I think this is the first one they'll suggest to you another option for a flatter blending brush would be the Morphe M433 brush this is how it looks up close as you can see it's very similar to the MAC 217 Here's a comparison of the two. The Morphe M433 is also a very good option, but I somehow always end up reaching for the MAC 217 brush. It's just more soft and it does an amazing, amazing job. So the next brush that I've been using a lot lately is the Morphe M421 brush. This is a very thin, and flat brush as you can see you cannot do any blending with this brush the purpose of this brush is mainly to pack on as much shade pigment as possible on your eyelids now this will not blend the eye shade at all the good thing about this brush is you can be really precise with that eye shade on your lid and if you don't want to take it outside the crease you can just stay there especially if you're doing like a cut crease and you want to keep the shade inside the crease inside the 
boundary that you've made for the crease for another option for this flat eyeshade brush would be this mac 239 brush that i own this is a little fluffier than the first one but it's still flat you can see that as you can see the morphe one is very flat and the mac is a little fluffier both will do a good job in applying the eyeshade on your eyelid but um, with the MAC one you just have to be really extra cautious if you don't want to take the shade outside the crease. Another must have brush for me would be the MAC 219 brush which looks like this. It's like a pencil brush, very small. It's uh, more compact. The purpose for this one would be smudging your eye shade or your eyeliner or even the lower lash line shade. Um, I basically use this for highlight application on my brow bone or the inner corner of my eye. That's actually the only reason I've been using this a lot. It's a really nice brush to have. Uh, it's a pencil brush so you can really use this inside the crease as well to just place that eye shade in like one precise location. Also in the corner of the eye if you want the deeper shade to be or whichever shade you want to be in like really one spot and not really too much smoked out you can use this for that and alternate for this brush would be the Sephora Pro Precision smudge brush number 29 this is how it looks it's definitely shorter than the MAC one but it does the job equally well this is how these two look and they're equally good it's there's a slight difference in the length of them now this is the cutest brush I own and I say that because it's really teeny tiny. If you look at it, it's very very small, very precise, there's hardly any length to it. This is the Morphe M508 brush and the reason I own this is because I use it to apply the eyeshade on my lower lash line. It gives me the most precise application of eyeshade and I can go as close to the lash line as possible with this brush. If you're looking for an alternate, um, Sephora has this uh, Pro Shader brush number 18. This is how it looks. It's a little lengthier than the Morphe one, but it does an equally good job. This is how these two compare. As you can see, the Sephora one is a little longer than the Morphe. So this would be for the lower lash line. I think it's a must have if you're starting off and you wanna just be careful with the eye shade, uh, how you place it under your lower lash line and you don't want it to, to look really messy. I think this is a good thing to have. Now this last brush that I'm gonna show you is not like an absolute must have, but it's nice to have, especially if you're into cut crease makeup. So it's this Morphe G20 brush. This is basically a concealer brush. I use this for like, um, you know, cutting crease for my eye makeup. Cut crease may eye makeup is very popular these days and it has been popular for quite some time now. Uh, for that you have to use concealer to really draw like a boundary for the crease and just fill it in with concealer and pack on with another shade. This is a flat brush. You can see it's flat, it's thin and it just is easy to use for that purpose. But you don't have to have this exact same brush. Any brush that's small in size and flat and you will know if you're able to draw the boundary easily with it. If you're able to do this with any brush, you can use that. You can also do the same thing with the Morphe M421 brush that I showed you earlier because it's also very thin and flat. So these were the most basic and my most favorite eyeshade brushes that I've been using over and over and I just cannot uh, literally do my eye makeup without. I hope this video helped you and if it did, please do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you aren't a subscriber yet. I will also give all the details of the brushes in the description box and I'll also be posting this on my blog. So do check that out. Yes, I do have a blog and I haven't been posting there regularly, but I'll be posting this over there and there's going to be some additional information there as well. So do check it out. I'll link it down in the description box as well. So so yeah, until next time, take care. Bye.